Okay, today we're going to start um, 69b, which is Samach uh, Tesem in the middle of the page. They need, you know, the, the Starbucks and things that hold the uh, little sleeve. Okay. So the Gemara here starts off with Kayane Lavia Yibi Israeli, talking about the people that came up from Babel to Eretz Yisrael. He said that there were different families that came. Families of Kayanim, families of Levim, families of Israelim. Midal and the Saliko, how do you know that they came to Eretz Yisrael? Because the, uh, after the first temple was destroyed, so the people were exiled to Babylonia. And then 70 years later, they make their way back to Israel. So when they came back to Israel, they bring these families. How do you know that these families came? It says, Kayanim and Levim came. Together with the other people. Okay. Halali Gere Vaharuri says that there were Halalim. Halal is someone that was a Kohen, but he what? lost the lineage. He lost the um not lost his lineage, he lost his uh, his um his rights to serve as a Kohen because his lineage was uh was ruined. Uh Minalan. Where do we know that there were halalim? The Gemara is later going to explain the gerim and the haruris. So, Didn't you say something about punishing the levim? Yeah. yeah, apparently it wasn't enough. I think the idea was that it wasn't enough. Levim. Yeah, I'm not sure if he said, I know there was, uh, he took away the mice from them because the levim didn't pay back, but I think it means that there weren't enough levim. Is this an exhaustive list of types of Yehusen? Ten. There's ten, ten, uh, ten, ten families, ten types. I think so. But is that is that it? Could you could you the Gamora also have said all types of Yehusen came back, or is it excluding something? Um, that I'm, that I'm not sure. You have to wait for the end of the Gemara. So you can hopefully. But it is quite general. So anyway, Khalali it says Rabbi uh Khalali Minal, how do you know that Khalalim came back? The time you started in a brisa, Rabbi Yesim Kadaila Khazaka. Rabbi Yesi says in this in this brisa, uh, Rabbi Yesi is a student of Rabbi Akiva, he says that uh Khazaka assumption is very great. Shnema Bnea Kain and Bene Khabaya. From the Kayanim, the sons of Chavaya, the sons of Kites, the sons of Brazil, that look, that I'm sorry, that took daughters from the Brazil, from Brazil, and they were called by their name. Yeah, apparently here it's following um, Brazil, they're called Benin Brazil. They, they asked for their ksav yichos, and it wasn't found. And they were removed from being kainim. And Nehemiah, he was his Nehemiah ben Tachulai. His name was Hatershasa. Uh, why was he called Hatershasa? Rashi says, I'm not sure exactly what Hatershasa means, but because he was a butler for... Um, was it for Nebuchadnezzar, maybe? And um, he had to drink the wine before he served it to the king to make sure it wasn't poison. So for some reason, for that reason, he's called Hatershasa. Because they allowed him to drink wine for non-Jews. Is he, is he referring to the word? From Shtia. From Shtia, you think? Okay. Um... Well, so Nehemiah tells them that 
that they can't eat from the holy sacrifices because they don't have their lineage. They're Kohenim, but we don't know if they're if everything is pure over there. And they can't eat from the holy sacrifices until the Kayan gets up with the Urim Vitumim, which basically means until Mashiach comes. Until we can establish. And he tells them that you're in your, this is the, Mar is explaining the conversation. He says that you still have your same assumption that you had beforehand. What did you eat when you were in Babylonia? It means we could eat truma that was outside of of, uh, of Israel. The um, which is the uh, which is the uh, truma. So it says You can also eat truma over here as well. So that's it. Uh, they so the chazaka that they had it remained, but, but whatever the case is, we're seeing that there were halalim, or, or at least questionable halalim that came back. Well, the Gemara says, You have a problem. You see a guy um, eating truma, then we can assume that he's probably miyuchas as well, right? You see a guy going up to duchen. It's probably give him an aliyah for Kayan, right? So he it's probably a Kayan. So if you would see him eating Truma, so you, you can also uh, assume that he's a Kayan. So now, what is uh, Nehemia? Uh, what is it? Uh, you know, we had a thing that had to do with that one name. It was initially the tool. So and that was the name. It wasn't a Kayan. Yeah, yeah. Did you think he was a Kayan? Oh, okay, fine. And then he found out, like, from Tombstones or whatever, that he was never. Clearly, fine. whatever, but maybe. Uh-huh. Interesting. I was at a kiddish once for a guy that uh, that he found out that he was a lady. He found the tombstone of his grand- grandfather, mm-hmm. and it said a lady. So they became the whole family became Levian. They're Bali Chuba. They didn't know anything. They, and um, yeah, pretty cool. So what's the kiddish about? That he became a levy. <laughs> 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 okay. So the problem is over here that what does he gain by telling him that he can't behave like a kayan? But if one thing is going to lead to another, it's going to end up being like a kayan. So Shani Hasim Direchas Kasayu. Well, over here, there's a little bit of a problem because they're only eating country egg bowl. They're not doing other things. So now it looks like, how come you're doing this? You're not doing that. So then we know that there's a problem there. So what did he mean that the assumption is great? He didn't do anything different than before. sounds like that because there was an assumed status, we're going to take you to a new level. They used to eat truma outside of the land of Israel. That's only rabbinic truma. In Babel, they, they would keep the laws of truma. Um, but now they're in Israel, they're still eating truma, and that's biblical truma. So you see that the assumption that they had in in, uh, in Babel is so strong that they're able to do even extra things in Israel. If you want, we can still say, Really now, they also only eat rabbinic truma. What is the rabbinic truma? That means that it wasn't from grain, wine, and oil. Even in Israel, it was only truma from other other uh, other types of crops. When do we say that if someone's eating truma, then we can assume that he's also miyuchas, he also has the lineage of a Kohen. That's only if he's eating biblical truma. That means in the land of Israel, he's eating truma from wine, uh, oil, and grain. But since this, this, uh, these families are only eating rabbinic truma, so then we don't have a concern that they're going to go from truma liyuchsin. So then what extra are they doing now that they didn't do before based on that assumption that they were Kohenim? Told me that Chazak is very strong. That means it's going to lift them up something. It says, Even when now, when they're eating rabbinic truma, it's still stronger than before when they ate rabbinic truma. Because before when they ate rabbinic truma, there was no concern that maybe they're going to eat biblical truma. Why? Because there was none. They were in Babylonia. There is no biblical truma. Now that they're in Israel and they're eating Truma from uh, from the vegetables and from the fruits that aren't uh, that aren't um, the wine or oil. 
so uh, so there's a concern that maybe they're going to end up eating the wine, oil, and grape truma. So uh, really, outside of Eretz Yisrael, there is no truma. But I think they kept it in Bavel because it was close to Eretz Yisrael. I think the countries Bavel. that are close to Eretz Yisrael, they kept the laws of truma. It's not like Syria. Syria was right. Sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they kept it at Pesach. They had it far back, basically. Yeah. That was um. Yeah, what was it called? Okay, so even though there is now there's a concern that maybe if you're going to eat Shuma de Rabban and you're going to end up eating, eating Shuma de Raisa, which that concern they didn't have before, nevertheless, because of the Chazaka, we, we ignored that concern. Mara says. Baksiv, one second, Pasuk says, Yaimer had Tashasa Lahem Ashelayachlam Mikadesh Akadashim. They can't eat from the Holy of Holies. That means Mikadesh Akadashim would lay out. They can't eat the Kadesh Akadashim. They can't eat the sacrifices. Akal Midinechel. But they're allowed to eat Truma Daraisa. You told me they can't eat Truma Daraisa. You told me they can't eat the Truma that's, that's from the grain and wine and oil. It's a Tachi Kamar. It's not Kaidesh Akadashim. It's Kaidesh or Kadashim. They can't eat things that are Kaidesh. What is that referring to? The Tzivachal Zar Leyechal Kaidesh. Truma. Right? And then they also can't eat. They can't eat Kadashim. Uh, that's referring to the sacrifices, which it says, Baskayan. You feel the Ishzar, he betrumas a Kadashim like Saifal. Um if a Baskayan marries a non Kayan, so she can't eat Trumas Akadashim, but Mamar Bamurim and a Kadashim. That means what's removed from the Kadashim, that means there was a chaz of a shaykh. The uh, chest in the in the in the thigh that was given to the Kayanim from every carbon shlamim. This the, this girl can eat it. Lay seichal she can't eat it, even if she returns to her father's house. When she returns to her father's house after she was married, she she can eat truma, but she can't go. She, she can't eat the carbon. So that's what it's referring to. Yeah. So she so what basically what uh, Nehemia told this family is that they can't eat truma. That's the two, the two percent that, that's given to the kohenim. They can't eat truma daraisa. They can eat truma darabonim, and they also can't eat from the sacrifices, which they started to do because it was the second day of English. Now we talk about so, Gerei Vacharari. So once again, is truma uh, any truma either it's outside the land of Israel or it's truma in the land of Israel, but it's not from grain, wine, or oil. So truma drabbanon outside of Israel ended at some point. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure when it stopped. Hmm. Uh, so you're saying it's not just a truma that went to the top. Yeah, the jubilee was done before. It was finished before that. Right now. Um, remember the Rashi in uh, in uh, Shemaya? Rashi calls it Tzivi Lach Tziyuni. That you should um, should keep the mitzvahs even when you're outside of, of Israel, so that when you come back, you'll be uh, you'll be familiar. So it makes it look like Rashi Berkot said. Yeah, what Chumash. 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 Anyway, they ask, what do you mean? Uh, you only keep mitzvahs, just uh, preparation. So when you come back to Israel, all of mitzvahs and chutzlarets is just, uh, it's just, um, it's just practice. Anyway, so they said it like this. They said that what Rashi says, you should do terror mitzvahs. And I think that Rashi may say tefillin and mezuzah. So maybe Anyway, so I saw in the Ksava Kabbalah. It's a very interesting statement, but anyway, right. It's supposed to say, Truma Samaisris. 
Trumas and Maishas, you, you don't do outside of Israel. You only do it in Israel. But uh, Rashi was saying that you should keep Trumas and Maishas out of Israel because when you go back, you should be familiar with it. Maybe that was that's referring to like in Bavel. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and not after the Korban, but after Shiloh. After Shiloh. In between Shiloh and the Basin Migdash, it was allowed, yeah. Yeah, once the Basin Migdash came, then you can't have the Mufaya. Yeah, yeah. the Mufaya Bala Nafla, that was like finished. A... No, no grace period. Not after the Basin Migdash. The Basin Bala Nafla, that's the Elsa and Miguel. Geri of Haruri, we're on top of Dapayan. Um, converts. And um, redeemed slaves were brought back from Bavel. Minalan Amr of Chizda, of Chizda says, Democrat says in the passage, and there were other people that attached and came along that they separated themselves from the impurities of the nations of the, of the land, which means that there were converts that came from, um, from Bavel back to Eretz Yisrael together with Ezra. Um, there were Kutum already there. Anyway, Mamzeire, we have another uh, another um, category. Mamzeire, you know, and how do you know that there were Mamzeirim? It says the Ksiv, it says in the Pasuk, the Yishpas Sambalet Hacharani, Sambalet Hacharani heard, the Tuvya Ha'eved Ha'amayni, and Tuvya, or Tuvya, I don't know how to pronounce it, Ha'eved Ha'amayni, the Ammonite slave, the Ksiv, and another Pasuk says, Ki Rabbim bi Yehuda bali shvu'alai, that many people of Yehuda were, had took an oath with him. They swore to him. I guess he was an important person. Because he was a son-in-law to Shechni ben Oirach. And Yoichanan's son married the daughter of Mishal ben Berechia. Okay, so what happened is we have a slave called Tuvia, and he's married to the daughter of Shechni. Well, Kasava, Revit Kecham Vever, Abal Bas Yisrael, Avlad Mamzer. You follow the opinion that a non-Jew that lives with a Jewish woman, the child, the offspring from that is considered a mamzer. So here we know that there were mamzerim that were came back to Israel. That only follows the view that says that a non-Jew with a Jewish woman, the child is a mamzer. Well, we said before that it wasn't. We learned from Yibamis that uh, we hold that it's not a mamzer. Where do you get the mamzerim from? Another question. It only said that he married. Doesn't say that they had children. And Dilma have a Maybe they never had children. The I think there's a Gemara that says Mamzer Lechai something. Uh, I remember. I don't remember. It's a Gemara or something else. Right? That uh, a Mamzer won't live. This uh, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He married a Jew. Vesu mi mai dehacha have a luhu v'sal v'sliku. How do you know? That they were in Bavel and they went up to Eretz Yisrael. Dilma Hasim have maybe they this family this uh, Tuvia Ebed was always in Israel. El Mehach we have another source. Ve'ila ha'ila mitel melach, tel charsha, kruv adoin. These people that came from tel melach, tel charsha, kruv adoin. And ba'amar and they said la'yuch lahage beis avayisam v'zarim im yisrael im yisrael him. They weren't able to say the lineage if they came from Israel. Now, the Gemara explains. Tel Melach, what does it mean, Tel Melach? Tel Melach means a mound of salt, if you translate it. These are people that their actions are similar to Sodom, and uh, which was turned into a mountain of salt. Tel Kharsha, what does it mean, Tel Kharsha? Zeshakari Abba Vime Mishtaktai. This is someone that he says, Daddy, and the mother says, "Shah, be quiet, because uh, we don't know who the who the father is." Uh, and they don't know their lineage. If they come from Israel. Sufi. This is someone that was just gathered up. It was found in a basket or something. Shenesaf minashuk. It was gathered from the marketplace. Kruvadin. What does it mean, Kruvadin? Um, so Amar. How do, you, how do you read that? Okay. It says, 
period. That's his name, Imar? Imar? Okay, one second. These are people. Amar Abavo, Abavo says, Amar Adain. Hashem says, I said that the Jewish people are important in front of me, just like the Kruvim. And they um, consider themselves like a leopard. Uh, I guess that means, really, Rashi says that. Um, that they were they weren't faithful to they would live with other people other other women um, I considered them important but they didn't consider themselves important and they they would um, they weren't careful with who they married Ikadamri there are those that say Amar Abavo Amar Adin Hashem says Afpisha Samatzman Ken Amar even though they made themselves so bad like a Amar Heim Chashul Lefanik Akruv but I still consider them important like a Akruv. Approaches to this. I'm a Rabbi Barbachana. Rabbi Barbachana says, Anyone that marries a woman that's not appropriate, referring to that the lineage is not is not uh, good. So, the Hashem considers it, or the Pasuk considers it, as if he plowed over the whole world and he planted salt in it. That's how they ruin the, the vegetation with the salt in it. Get which uh, country they did that to in Roman times or Greek times. Remember the the war, Carthage. What was it? Car Carthage. Carthage. Or should they threw salt on it? Uh, it should be like no one could ever live there again. Uh, Yitzi seconds that uh, Hillel says. This lineage is not like you just didn't say it. It's talking about like I think it is Yitzi. I think, uh, I think it's Yichus. Yes, they didn't know who like who the who the father was or something oh, like that. Shenemar, yeah. as it says, Vela Hoylemi Tel Melach. These are those that came from Tel Melach, Tel Kharsha. Came from Tel Melach. It's uh, it's as if that they threw salt over the uh, over the soil. Amar Rabba Baravad Amarav. Rabba Baravad says the name of Rav. What was the last one? That was just Rabba Barbachana. Now it it says Kolanesi Isla Shemamin. Anyone that marries a woman because of her, uh, her her wealth, it's also talking about not just because she's wealthy. It's talking about that the lineage is not good, and he married her because she's uh, because she's wealthy. He overlooked the lineage because of the uh, wealth. You're allowed to marry a wealthy woman. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's fine. Here we're talking about where there's a mamzerus issue. Oh. So in other words, marry a convert is actually probably better than. There's it. A convert is perfect. There's no, uh, there's no shyness. You convert it, it's good. Um, but there could be an issue with of mamzeris if families don't know like the background. The convert like starts over. The children won't be, uh, won't be um, uh, respectful. Won't be uh, acceptable. What's, uh, what happens? I don't know. Shenemar it says, Hashem Bagdu. They rebelled against Hashem. Kibanim Zar Miladu. Because they had strange uh, children. Or, uh, what does it mean that it came from a woman that was Psula? Maybe they'll say, okay, they have trouble with the kids, but they'll still have money. It says, I'm not sure if I'm reading that correctly. Okay. Yeah, so which means that. Um, going to be devoured. Maybe it's only his portion, but not her portion. Maybe she'll, she'll still have her portion. Um, says their portion, plural. Maybe it's going to take a long time. and They'll have it, you know, uh, while it lasts. Uh, they'll live it out. It's only going to be one month. My mashma. What does that mean? One month comes in, one month goes, and the money's already gone. Okay.
it, it, here it's referring to um, that there's a lineage issue. You're allowed to marry for money, allowed to marry for beauty. That theme is not a lachish here, but the, they have to be, have a uh, lineage also. It's only when you're overlooking lineage, you're overlooking uh, things because there's money or because of whatever. Okay. Amar Rabba Baravada Varmilam Rav Salam Rav Amnuna. A bunch of, it's either Rabba Baravada or Rav Salah in the name of Rav Amnuna. Kolonesi, I thought Rav Amnuna didn't get married. Um, At one point, he wasn't married. He must have got married later. Also, went to be, unless unless this is what he's concerned about. Anyone that marries a woman that wasn't uh, that isn't uh, befitting for him, Elio ties him up, and Hashem uh, hits him. Yeah, hits him with a with a strap. Tana, I'm sorry, Malchus. And it was taught, Al Kulam Elio Kaisiv Akadz Baruch Hu Chaisim. And all of them Elio writes in Hashem signs, Oyloy Lapaisa Lazare Lapigmas Prishpachti, when I see Shashina again, it's like, what was to the person that ruins his uh, descendants? He spoils his family and marries a woman that's not appropriate. Okay. Leo Kaisiv Akadz Baruch Hu Chaisim, they take out those words. Said that before. I guess. Who is this? This is the director. Apostle. Anyone that says that other people are are uh, are in are their lineage is invalid, they're also invalid. It's like a mirror. Yeah, it's a mirror, right? They don't say anything nice about anyone. Hey, I know someone like that. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh Shmuel, Shmuel says, my paisal, that whatever he claims other people have, he himself he himself has that. Okay. Does it work the opposite? You're so nice. <laughs> it probably does. A lot of friends that you have. Does it mean I'm nice? Oh. Uh, but, okay, but it's like small. This was like place of Ramuma. Yeah. Gavra de Minardoi was a fellow from Nardoi. The Allah Baymet Bachai Pompadisa. He came to the um, to the butcher shop in Pompadisa. Amalahu, he says, Havali Bissa, give me some meat. Amalay, Amrulay, they said to him in the butcher shop, Nitar, Ad Shakala Shami the Ravid by the Cheskal Venesavla. Wait. The, the messenger of Yehuda, of Yehuda by Yecheskel is going to be here. We're going to give him the meat first, and then we'll give you set. Amar man Yehuda bar Shaviskal. The Kadam leave a shakal the shakal min kamai. Who was this Yehuda bar Shaviskal? He changes his name. Instead of Yehuda bar Yecheskel, he calls him Shaviskal. And um, it sounds like it's a, a word for someone that's a glutton. <clears throat> oh, meat roast eater. Yeah, like roasted roast meat. Yeah, he eats roasted meat. So who is this? Oslo uh, Amrulelo Rav Yehuda. So they went and told Rav Yehuda what this fellow said. Shamte Rav Yehuda put him into Cherem. Amru. They then tell Rav, told Rav Yehuda, "Ruggle the Kari and Shiavdi. This fellow, you should know, he walks around tell, calling everyone slaves. Well, Achazale da Avduhu. Rav Yehuda uh, announced that he's a slave. So he's in Cherem and he's a slave. He's never going to get a shidduch. He's uh, can't even communicate with people, and now he also his, his lineage is just put into question. So Azel Hahu Asmei Ladina the Kamedir of Nachman. What's it called when someone gives a bad name? They get uh, what's the what type of court case? What's it called? De de defam defamation. defamation. Yeah. Gets called to Bezdin, um, to in front of Rav Nachman. Nachman was in Ardai, and this is Rav Yehuda by Cheskel. He's in Pompadisa. <laughs> So I see Piska does mana of Nachman. Now who put him in? Uh, 
Rabbi Yehuda puts this Nardai fellow into Cherem. This guy so goes back it? to Nardai, and he tells his his Rav in Nardai to make a to uh, to call him to court, to call um, Rabbi, Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda to court for what he did to him, for defamation and putting him in Cherem. Yeah, but that, he, I guess he felt that that a glutton roast eater was not as bad as Hiram and, uh, and uh, yeah. Who? Rabbi Huda? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure his, uh, his, his wealth. I know that he was a student of Rav. Um, Amrav Yudha Marav is very common. Rabbi Huda says name is very common. Uh, he was also a student of Shmuel. But I, it's more common for him to say in the name of Rav. Right. Yeah, he gets first. The Rav uh, gets first. So I see Piska does mana. So Rav Yehuda takes the um, the document of the summons. Also Rav Yehuda, Lakami de Rav Huna. He goes to Rav Huna. Rav Huna was the one that was the main student of Rav. He took over the yeshiva after Rav. Amrlei, he says to him, Ezel Ezel, should I go to the court or should I not go? The, in Nahardai. In Nahardai. Um, so Rav Huna says, <coughs> Mezel, lay me by lach le mezel. To go, you don't need to go. Misham the Gavra, but because you're an important person. Well, Misham Yukur, the Benasiya comes ill because Rav Nachman is a, a relative of the house of the Nasi, which means the Reish Galusa. So um, you should go. You should go because of that. You should go. Really, you don't have to, but to give honor to the Rav Nachman, you should go. Because of the house of the Nasi. Also, he went, Ashkechei the covered Micah. He sees that Rav Nachman is putting up a fence. Fence probably around his roof or something. You don't hold what Rav Huna Baridi says in the name of Shmuel. Rav Nachman's a student of Shmuel, by the way. That once a person becomes appointed over the community, he's not allowed to do work in front of three people. I heard about this, Rav would fix his uh, car and um, uh, they didn't the community didn't like it so he would then he somehow figured out a way to drive it into his living room and he would fix it over there without <laughs> <laughs> so people wouldn't see that he's uh, uh, tuning it up okay so Amale Porta de Gundrisa Hudaka Vidna I'm just doing a little fence it's not a big deal it's not, not like real work Amale Misanya Maika de Ksiv Bairaisa Machitza Damarabonan What's with your language? You're calling it the Gundarisa. Why don't you call it a Micah that's written in the Torah? That's how you, that's a word for offense in the Torah. Or why don't you call it Mechitza, which is the word for the Rabbana? They call it, that's offense for the Rabbana. In the, in the common, they call it Amalei, Yosef Mar Akarpita. He tells him, sit down on the, on the bench, Akarpita. Ah, ah means on. Yeah. What's wrong with the word safsal that the rabbis use or with a common word that uh, it's the book. Esrunga said, why don't you have some, eat some esrig with me. Eat some esrig. That's not much of a meal, but um, it was a jelly, a jam. It was, yeah. So uh, he said, he says, he says, he says, what does tilsa mean? Does it mean a third? Anyone that says a shrunga is a third. Does it say a third in yeah. English? Yeah. He's a third ahori. Uh, Ay esrig kedekai rabani. Either say the word esrig. Ay esrega dami inchi or say esrega. Esrega means the esrig. Amalei listimar an anbega. He says, why don't you have something to drink? Some anbega. Amalei misani espargos kedekai rabana na yanpek dami inchi. I'm not sure what this is exactly. It's a type of cup. Asparagus. Asparagus. Yeah, asparagus, asparagus was a drink. I thought it was like. Ball. It holds a revius, but I don't know what's in it. Um, okay. <coughs> yeah. So what was it? It was a vegetable that was soaked in wine. They said in the, in the notes over there in the corner, it says it's a vegetable that was ground and soaked in wine. 
Sounds good. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's what, what the vegetable is, right? Sweet potato. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> um, Damri Inch, why don't you say uh, another language, another word? Why are you doing that? Our Malay, he says, Tesi Dunag Tashkinan. Dunag, that's the name of Rav Nachman's daughter. I have on the side it says Didak. Dunak should come and uh and pour us uh, drinks. Amalai, so Rav Yehuda says to Rav Nachman, he's like being very difficult, Rav Yehuda. Everything he says, he's being he's like showing him like you could have done it better, you didn't you know. What's it called when you when you actually sort of behave everything, you just like keep attacking like, like very um very difficult to get along with. So yeah, critical. We're not supposed to use a woman for uh to for any service. It says, well, Katani, she's just a child. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Even if it's a child, we shouldn't be using it. Now over here, I think he thinks that this is like a real scholar. So he says, you know, why don't you say hello to my wife? Shalma means to send a message of peace or to say hello to Yalta. Rav Nachman's wife is Yalta. I don't want to talk to her because um, uh, the voice of a woman is like nakedness. It's not, it's not uh, modest. You shouldn't even hear her talking. That's very strict. We just say this by singing. We don't say this by talking. Right. Does it mean not to have a waitress? Well, it says, uh, like you have to serve the same wine. So I thought it would be the same wine as the wine. Right. That's what Rashi says. Rashi says she shouldn't become accustomed to hanging out amongst the men. So you don't uh, have to do that. Uh, it's not necessarily a prohibition on the man, it's more a privilege. Not to train the women to, to always be on the men's side. Okay, well, um, Rav Nachman says, You can send the messenger to say hello to, to Yalta. On Malay, he says, Shmuel. Shmuel says, Ain shalim, ain shalim um, Maybe the, uh, the, the messenger will, will, um, shouldn't be, shouldn't be saying, you know. So he says, Well, Ali, they buy them. So over there it says, yeah. Over there it says they wanted to make her, make Avram fond of Sarah by saying, by realizing that she was uh, sneers when she stayed inside. But that was Ali Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this means. I don't know if it means to say hello or to send regards or to. I'm not sure. That's by the voice, right? Yeah. I'm a lay. How come I'm small? So Rav Nachman says, but so uh, so uh, you sent through me. Uh, the husband is allowed to to talk to his wife. I'm lucky I'm a small. Ain't shalom b'shleim misha klal. You're not supposed to send even with the uh, even through the husband. Sholcha lay debisu. Yalta apparently overheard the conversation and she sends to Rav Nachman, says, Shari le tagre, le nashvach keshar amaretz. Let him go. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be considered like a, uh, a regular amaretz, like an ignoramus. Like she everyone. Said she says to Rav Nachman, she says, like, finish up the conversation. Amalei, mai shaite demar hacha. He says, what is your, shaite sounds like the swim. Like, what are you swimming over here? Like, what brought you over here? The master sent me a summons. So Amalei Hashta Shusa Demar like Amirna Taska Das Minusa Mishadana Lamar. I can't even speak like the master, and I sent you a summons. Shusa is So he's saying that he I can't even speak. understand your the yeah, I don't even understand to speak as uh, as you, and I'm sending you a summons. So Obviously, he didn't know. He didn't know uh, who he was sending the summons to. 
Apik diska das minusa mi bechadye vachsilay. He takes out the summons, diska the, the document of the summons from his chest. He shows it to him. Amalei hagaver vadaske. He says, look, this is me and this is the document. Amalei hayol vasamar lahachel l'shtoy mile. Okay, so let's have the case. He wants you here. He hechid lei lemro mechampi rabban adadi. They shouldn't say that the rabbis just do things like uh, they they, uh, they flatter each other. You know, so we should have the case just for official purposes. Amalei my time a shamti marlo gavre. He says, starts the case. He said, why did you put him in chaim in chairim? Says tzir shlichad rabbanon. He uh, was bothering the uh, the messenger of the of the of the rabbis. I guess the messenger of, of, of the rabbi was going to get the meat for Rabbi Yudah Yeah, it, it was interfering with the messenger. So, the um, Nagdei Mar. So why don't you give him Malkus? That's the Rav Manged Almanda Mitzar Shluchad Rabbanon. Why don't you give him lashes? Well, the other from I did even better. Put him in Cherem. My time Achers Mar Le Adavdu. So why did he announce that he's a slave? Amalei the Ruggel the Korean Shiavdi, because he would call everyone else a slave. The Tanikala Paisel Paisel, Veinu Medav B'Shvach Leilam V'Mashmol B'Mumay Paisel. Mashmol says that anyone that um, calls someone else a name, that really is what he has. Veinu Medav Mashmol L'Mechashle. Maybe Shmuel said they have to be concerned, but Lachuz Yelam Miyamar, but to announce as if it's definite. Did he say that? Ada Hachi Vachi. Meanwhile. Um, Says, Asahu Bardina Minardoi. The, the fellow shows up. Yeah, but it doesn't work. I mean, it's not going to work every time the rabbi says, You're an Ebed. Oh, it happens to him. So now, yeah. Like, there's no end yeah. to it. Right. Right. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Amalei by Dina Rav Yehuda. So the the um the litigant says to uh to to Rav Yehuda. No, this is um the the fellow from Nardai that uh, well, he, he shows up. up. He says, "Lididi karesli avda dasin beis chashmanoi malka." He says, "Me, you're calling a slave? Don't you know who I am?" I come from the, the kings of Kashmanai. A Malay, so he says, oh, perfect. Oh, yeah, Shmuel. What Shmuel says, called Amr, the Beis Kashmanai, Kassin Avdo. The, the fellow that was called, the, that, 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 the, no, the, uh, the, um, the person that was in Khairim. The person that was in Khairim said, how dare you call me a, uh, uh, an Evet? So the Amalei, so Rav Yehuda says oh, to him, he says, um, Shmuel says, anyone that says, from Kashmunai is an Evid. Amalei, like seven Marla, Hadam Rababa, Marabuna, Marab, Kotam, Kokin Shmer, Lachaba, is now Rab Nachman talking. Im Kaida Maisa Amra, any Tam Kachan that says a halacha, if he says the halacha before it's relevant to him, so then Shaiman, like we listen to him, Vim Lav, but once the, what's relevant to him, then he can introduce a new halacha based on something that it's going to benefit him. Amalei, Hikar of Masna, or of Matana, the Kai Kavasi. Okay, so don't hear it from me. Listen to Rav Masna. He says the same thing. Rav Masna lechazal in Ardoi tleis hashni. Rav Masna wasn't in Ardoi for thirteen years. Ahu yai Masa. He shows up that day. Amalei dachemar. Does the master remember my Amr Shmuel? But Shmuel says he koy chadakar aguda v'chadakar b'mavra. Shmuel had one foot on the riverbank and one foot on the bridge, and he said a halacha. Do you remember what he said? Amalei hachi Amr Shmuel called them beis chashmonoi malka kasina avdehu. Anyone that says that he comes from the house of the Hashmainayim, he's a slave. Because there was nothing left from them. Elahu Revisa, just that one girl, the Salkaligra, she went up to the roof. I'm of Hordus. Hordus. Went up, she went up to the roof. The Ramyakala, she announced, she said, anyone that says they're from a base Hashmainayim is a slave because there's no one left except for Hordus that was an Edomite slave. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. And that I think at the end, Hordus wanted to marry this girl, and she Miriam. refused. She refused. 
she went up to the roof and she jumped off. She jumped off the roof. Before she jumps off, she says, I'm the last one that's left. Um, anyone that says from now on that they're from the house of Tashmana, it comes from Hordas. She fell off the roof and died. Okay, so they announced that this fellow is a slave. Nachman announced he was a slave. Yeah. Right. So, Ahu Yaima, that day, Akron Kamak Subsub in Ardai. A lot of uh, marriages had trouble in Ardai after this because. Had to tear up the ksubas because people didn't realize this wife was this, uh, not doing this, whatever. Okay, well, what happened with the shanta? With the cherem, yeah, I'm not sure how long it lasts. If it lasts thirty days, or uh, you know, or until he asks for forgiveness, I don't know. I'm not sure. It was definitely, it was something that they didn't know. Like you say, if I would have known, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, um, as he's leaving, so the people are following him to stone him. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda's leaving Narda, he really messed up the, uh, caused a lot of uh, commotion. So, he says, if you guys are quiet, then be quiet. If not, Maglino Alaihu Hadam Shmuel. I'm gonna start announcing other things that Shmuel said. Tati Zaraisi Ikaba Nardai, there's two families of Nardai, Khadimikaya de Bay Yaina, one is called the House of Yaina, the Khadimikaya de Bay Orvasi, one's called the House of Orvasi. Simanach, and if you want to know more, Tami Tami Taratar, the House of Orvasi is impure, and the House of Yaina is pure. The Oyrev is means a uh, raven. Sadyua Lahu Rigma Miyadayo, they got afraid that he's going to announce other things. And they threw the rocks from their hands. Atman Benar Malka. And um, it, uh, it uh, dammed up the river. That's so many people that wanted to stone him. Machas Rav Padisa. You know, they wanted to stone him because they were upset with him. So they put then after he threatened them, they put their stones down. And, but in the river, but it, it blocked the river. Machus Rabbi Yudah B'Pampadisa, or maybe Benardai, there's two versions of him. Rabbi Yudah announced, Adav Yainasan Avdi. These two uh, families or two people, they're slaves. Yehuda Bar Papa Mimazira, Bati Bar Tuvya Baramais, Baramis Rucha, Leshakal Gita de Chirusa. I think he's still. Uh, is, this is still a Rabbi Huda announcing. He's saying that these are, they never accepted, no. They wouldn't take the uh, the document that would free them. Machus Rabbi Bemachuza, Baloi, Danoi, Taloi, Malay, Zagai, Kulam, Lipsul. These are a bunch of names. Yeah, all of these names, all of these people are puzzle. Uh, we're gonna see in a moment. Not it doesn't say because of uh, the Gibbonites yet. Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says Goivai Givaini. The name Goivai means that they come from uh, Givaini, or maybe that 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 fellow that's named Goivai. He's a Gibbonite. Darnu Nisa, Dura, Duroi Nisinai. They come from the city of uh, the village of Nisin of Nisinim, uh, which is also a Gibbonite. Amr Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef says, Hi, Bikuvi, the Pampatisa Kulm Davdi. This uh, family, Bikuvi, or this village of Bikuvi, or everyone there is a slave. Amr Rabbi Yudam Shmuel, Abba Meir Savadim, Rabbi Yudam says the name of Shmuel, there's 400 slaves. Ramil Arbas Alafim Avadim, some say there were 4,000 slaves. Say, Layla Pashkar Benima, that were to this uh, fellow Pashkar Benima, which was in the days of Yermiel. The Kulm Nitin Vakuna, all of them ended up getting. Involved with Kayanim and marrying Kayanim. Any Kayan that has a lot of chutzpah, obviously it comes from them. It says, um, What does it mean, Bishura? Does it mean Bishura or does it mean Bishura? Uh, all of them sat in a row in Nardai. What does it mean in a row? A rose of honor. They're all honor, they're all considered honorable people. 
Fliga de Rabalazar, this argues with Rabalazar, Nam Rabalazar, Misa Kayan Bas Metza, Haltarachra. Rabalazar said that if you see a Kayan that has a lot, is very brazen, a lot of chutzpah, don't be concerned that maybe he's not a uh, Kayan. The Shnem of Amech Kimrivi Kayan, your nation is like the argument of argumentative Kayanim. That's a, that's a trait. That's not a, uh, doesn't mean there's something wrong. Amar Abavin Baravada, Amar Rav, Abavin Baravada, said the name of Rav, Kalnesi Isha, Shane Agenis, like, However, marries a woman that's not appropriate. If I could spark from Masha Shinose, may it I'll call a Shvatim and made a love. Hashem testifies about all the tribes, but doesn't testify about him. Shinema Shifte Kaidis the Israel, the nation, the, the tribes of God, testimony to Israel. Imasaviadis the Israel, when is the testimony to Israel? Bisman Shashvatim Shifte Ka. That's only when the Shvatim are Shifte Ka. It's only when they, they marry the proper lineage. Amar Rabchama Barab Khanina. Shem only puts his uh, his shchina on the families that are have lineage. I would be that day, uh, at that time, I'll be a uh, God for all the families of Israel. It's only for the families of Israel that means that they have lineage. They will be for me as a nation. Amar Rabba Barahuna Zumaili Yesera Yesh Ben Yisrael Legedim. This, there's a uh, advantage that a, uh, a, a Jew from birth has over the converts. By uh, the families of the Jewish people, it says, I will be for them a God and they'll be for a nation. We'll be Now, apparently, um, they both say the same thing, but by, by the Gerim, it's they come close first. It's not Hashem comes. It's it's first. It's um, they come close, and then Hashem is the king. By the the Jewish families, Hashem is the king, and then they then they become the nation. That's what it says. Amr of Chelba is a famous Gemara. Chelba says Koshim Gerim Liyshal Kesapachas that uh, the converts are difficult to the Jewish people, like a uh, a spot of leprosy. Shnemar Vanilva Gera Lemanis Chelba basically Taisus has an explanation. Nisqal Bas Yaqab Ksifakam Nisqal Ksivakam Sesal Osapachas. Um Taisus explains, he quotes a few things over here, but Taisus explains that um they keep the Torah so well. He quotes from Rabbi Brahma Ger. He says the the uh because in the conversion process they have to learn the the Hilfa Shabbos and they have to learn everything so well, so they keep everything so it looks like they do everything better than than the, the other Jewish people. They come out looking better, so it looks like a blemish. They make they make everyone else look bad. That's one of the pshatim. Okay, then Amar Kishakadus Baruch Mitar Shvatim Shifti Shalev Mitar Tchila. When Hashem when Hashem purifies the tribes, he's going to purify Levi first. That means when he's going to tell, discuss the lineage. Shenemar Veyeshiv Mitzurif Mitar Kesef Betiras Bnei Levi Veziki Goisam Kizav Ukekesef Vahayu La Hashem Agishim Mincha Betzdaka. Okay, so it says that he purifies Levi. I'm Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Kesef Mitar Mamzerim. Shua ben Levi says that money or silver purifies the Mamzerim. Shnei Rabbi Yishev Mitzraf and Mitar Kesef. My Megishim Minchat Tzedaka. I'm Rabbi Yitzchak Tzedaka. So Kadosh Baruch Hu Mishal to Mishpachah Shnitma Nitma. Okay, so apparently because people were wealthy, so then they would find Shaduchim even though there was they had questionable lineage, and so that 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 ends up purifying them because once someone uh, is lost, once the lineage is lost, it's forgotten. So you just keep it quiet and you don't uh, have to go around and announce it once it's lost.